right there. <laughs> hey. Check, check. Check, check. Wow, wow, wow. Hey guys, I'm Avery with University Pulse. And I'm Bryn with University Pulse. And today we are interviewing Neocentrics, a local band from Idaho. Woohoo! Perfect. Okay, so just to start off, um, I know you guys just recently released a new album, and I just was wondering, like, what, where did the name of this new album, where did it come from? Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> well, that's the thing with, like, a lot of the records is, like, when I'm working on, like, the songs, they just kind of, the name for the project just kind of comes out of nowhere. And that was just like I have like a note, like a note in my phone of just like multiple like song and album titles that I think sound cool, and that was just one of them. And I I was like, oh, that's really cool. And so that's just been kind of the name. Yeah, the name that's sick. Like, just like out of the spur, just whenever it yeah, comes. Yeah, just out of the batch. Yeah. Just pulled it and thought it thought it fit well. So. Yeah. Oh, nice. So. Our next question is if there were any newer specific influences for this album in particular. Do one of you guys want to say something? I, 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 I'm like trying to gather. Well, I just have to say I, I wasn't I wasn't in the band. Yeah, Quinn, <laughs> so, Quinn's new. So, he wasn't involved enough. with the making I'm of the record. clarifying that. Yeah, anyway. I remember when we were even trying to come up with influences for, like, the mixing. We were kind of having a hard time, like, even placing, like, where this record kind of fit, like, genre-wise. Um, but I remember, like, one that got brought up a few times between, like, multiple members was, like, Black Midi. And just kind of going for something more, like, abrasive and, you know, funky. We also, on a couple different songs, wanted to do, like, stuff like the OCs, where it's a lot, a little faster and more aggressive. So that was another influence for us, recording some of these songs. Yeah, I would say like Black Midi, Black Country New Road, some Modest Mouse, um, OCs. Sonic Youth. Yeah. Sonic Youth, yeah. That's another one. Okay. So, how do you think Neocentrics has shaped or influenced the Boise music scene? We haven't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I don't. I, I don't know. Um, like, like we're all pretty young still, but it's like it's cool when like younger kids come up to me who like are like, "Oh, this is my first show. You guys were awesome." Or like younger kids who are starting bands because they saw us and they were like, "We want to do that." You know, that's. It's it's cool to know like that we have like an influence like that. Yeah, I was gonna say something along the same lines. It's cool seeing like there's uh, of course there's gonna be bands that came before us and bands came after us, but it's cool to hear like individual people that have started things now, started projects or bands. Say like, oh, I got started because I came to one of your shows or another band in the scene shows, and it's just cool that like we get a you know down coast meet those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out down coast. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any like bands that have actually came into place that have come to you inspired from you that you know of no i can't really think of anyone yeah i can't uh, think of anyone specifically but it is kind of i nice i, I know that crush the monster started because yeah cam, cam elgart came to me and was like hey i want to do stuff do you want to play guitar in my project so that's kind of how that band started. But I mean, besides that, I can't really think of anything. Yeah, it's nice to like have the potential to grow the scene and like bring more people in and make it more inclusive, whatever that means or whatever that shows. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not necessarily people who were like inspired by us that wanted to do stuff. It's even like contemporaries, like other people doing stuff right now. We said Down Coast a second ago that like covered Lucas, the Cosmic Loner, one of our songs oh. at one of their shows, which was really cool. Yeah. That it's like, oh, cool. There's people that we play side by side with that are now playing stuff that we like, and you yeah. know. So I think that's been really cool too. What do you hope to see with your progress in the future? You're throwing down all the big questions. Mm -hmm. I like it. I don't really know how to answer. Um, I don't know. Just kind of keep doing what we've been doing. Um, you know, 
bands are I, I, what I notice now is a lot more bands who are coming to town know of us and are like hey we want you to play with play a show with us which is cool to see so I don't really know just kind of just keep going down the same path that we've been going down Taco Bell Arena that's yeah, where Taco we're shooting Bell Arena. <laughs> the extra mile arena <clears throat> I mean sorry yeah <laughs> opening for one direction <laughs> Backstreet Boys reunion. I think that oh. would be the coolest thing to open up for. Oh, uh, <laughs> Luke Combs. <laughs> maybe we'll be. Maybe we'll get asked for Zach Bryan. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> Zach Bryan's kind of an ask. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, if you could give like any musician, living or dead, your album, like for them to listen to for praise, who would it be? Beethoven. I think I, th- I think it would ruin his opinion on music. I think we'd be in a much different position now, the world, if Beethoven had a oh, yeah. just some much louder, aggressive music. To listen. <laughs> it's like going back in time to a child in the 1200s, giving him like a warhead candy, and just ruining, just ruining their life for a little bit. <laughs> I feel like this is a question we need answers from Quinn. <laughs> you got one? Mm. Does it have to be a musician? Does it have to be a musician? Or could it be? Um <laughs> a historical figure. Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan. Khan. It can be anyone. It can be anyone. It can be anyone. Uh that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I'll have to think about that one. I think that's a good hypothetical. I'll think about it. Um Thurston Moore. I think that would be cool. I think he would like what we did. Yeah, no, we could just pull still up on him and be like, Hypothetically, no, here's, we could here's my still little do that. EP, here's my little <laughs> mixtape. You gave one to Henry Rollins one time, didn't I you? Did. Our first I did. Album to I, Henry I, gave, I gave a long way out cassette <laughs> to Henry Rollins because he came through Boise in like May and I like somehow met him after his show and I had a cassette on me and I was like, Hey, this is my band. We sound like dinosaur junior. I told him that cause I was like, I know that's a band that he likes. And he goes, well, you, you guys must have a really good guitarist then. And I was like, yeah. And that's not, that's not an answer to your question. I'm sorry. Um, uh, John F. Kennedy. Okay. I just want to see what John F. Kennedy thinks about anything. I was gonna say, did oh, you, Evan, <laughs> did you? Didn't that you neocentric state did, there. Didn't you make Billy Corgan mad? <laughs> didn't he? Didn't he block you? <laughs> I make everyone mad. Okay, Who are you right. fooling? Okay, and on top of this question, if you could give any cartoon character this album for them to listen to, who would you give it's it? To? Fred Flintstone. Why? I don't know. Just, 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 just cause he'd have a yabba okay. dabba do time. Okay. Have a gay old time. <laughs> yeah, he likes rock. <laughs> That's a good one. Both Ren and Stimpy of Ren and Stimpy fame. Mm, um, I think. <laughs> What's a lot of cartoons? <laughs> There's a lot of cartoons. That I think maybe. Uh, Bimo, Adventure Time. That's a good one. Yeah. Maybe like Courage the Cowardly Dog, because he's so he's because he's really brave. <laughs> <laughs> Dexter's mom giving Dexter's mom the tape. Ah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Lightning McQueen. I hope he would speed and get pulled over. Okay. <laughs> Make that guy go fast. <laughs> All right. On a different topic, what is Neocentric's musical aura? Aura? Like, like uh, can you elaborate? Like how people have auras, like <sighs> green. Oh, or whatever. okay. Okay. Some yeah, spiritual yeah, yeah. little thing. Yeah, um, like a, like a dark green. I think, yeah, I'm yeah, good I with like green and maybe sometimes like, you know, like a sharp orange. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say that. Do you ever wear green or orange while you're performing? No, I keep it pretty like black and white. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm not at liberty to say. I guess I am wearing a blue jean jacket. That works. All right. So, when you were kind of recording in the process of making your new album, what do you have any like sort of prominent musical risks or stuff you went through when going through it? There's one part on the album when all of us scream and all of us uh, yell like birds. That was a risk, and that uh, that's that was probably one of my favorite memories of, of recording for the new album, was all of yeah. us getting together and doing that in the studio. It was fun. That sounds very fun, like yeah. letting it out. <laughs> yeah, seriously, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it was fun in the process, getting to getting yeah. to do that. That and, like, like, recording the intro track for the record... These guys weren't involved in it, but I did it, and someone reviewed the record recently, and they said it was like a, it was like us doing a good cover of the HBO intro. You know, like the static HBO intro where it's like, Shaw! yeah. That's the that's the, probably the best description I've seen. In the next but, record, we got to do the THX, like, do that intro. That'd be fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, throughout your album, you have the recurring characters of Elliot and Marlene. Is this a narrative based on personal experiences, or is it more made up in order to craft a story in your music? It's very made up. Um, yeah, the whole record. Someone actually guessed it pretty accurately, but I'm just going to come out and say what the narrative is. So, the whole album is about this guy who wakes up in the middle of the desert. He has amnesia, and... He, you know, he has amnesia. He doesn't remember who he is. So he's like, oh man, I got to find someone. So he starts wandering through the desert and then he gets attacked by, by some vultures. And then he gets rescued by Elliot and then they, they go to a bar and then they get into a bar fight. Oh no, a bar fight. Um, and then the main character gets rescued by Marlene and he falls in love with Marlene, even though she's just like, hey, I'm here to just help you out. Like, I don't want, you know, I don't want that. And then, yeah, he kind of just copes with that and then goes to a bar, starts drinking again, and then walks in on Elliot trying to kill Marlene. And then Elliot shoots him, and then he dies. And that's the whole story of the record. Bada bing, bada boom. Very cool. Do you think you're gonna like make a music video or something out of this, or do you just is this like your final thing for now? I actually haven't thought of that. That would be kind of cool if we made like a whole like film around the record. That'd not not a whole cool. film, but like a short film. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Th- uh, this is our final thing for now. But we're just working on we're working on new material right now and just trying to get that ready. Speaking of I guess the visual side of things, I was wondering if you could talk a bit about your album art, like its significance and your process for coming up with Yeah, that was it. the the original drawing was done by my friend Eddie and um I just yeah, I asked him, I was like, Hey, can I use this for an album cover like a neocentrics cover and he he likes our music a ton so he was like sure and so i i just took creative liberties and just edited it and just made it look super cool and yeah shout out eddie shout out eddie i don't know if you're watching this but (laughs) (coughs) do you have any ideas for what you might want to do with your album art in future albums or do you tend to find it just happen spontaneously each time it kind of just happens spontaneously each time like i'll i'll just either i'll find an image that i like and i'll reach out to whoever made it and it's like hey can i use this and they'll be like sure go for it and or yeah that's like 90 percent of the time that's how that happens or i'll or i'll find something that i like and i'm just like okay that's the album cover just kind of there's no real science behind it it just kind of happens i like that where would you say 
is the funnest place you've toured so far? Oh, man. Answer. Well, probably our most recent one when we went to Portland. Yeah, and Port- was kind of Portland like, uh, was super fun. It was an interesting show because we were like driving through like a huge storm on the way there. We really didn't think it was going to happen. And we get there and the crowd was like very energized and like reactive to our music. So it was nice to see like even on what could have been like a very bummer day, people like showed out and supported us. Yeah, I've come to the conclusion after that show that Portland punks are way better than Boise punks. Sorry, Boise punks. <laughs> no, the dude, they came out. There was one kid that walked up to me after we after our set after, when we were packing up, and he was like, "Yo, man, that that set was so sick, man. Yeah." He's like, "It's my birthday today, man." I was like, "I was like, cool, man. How old are you turning?" He's like, "Nasty nineteen, man." And I'm like, "Cool, man. That's what's up." He was, like, he was like, I'm glad the show didn't get canceled. I was like, thanks for coming out. Yeah, Portland was super fun. We also played with a couple super fun bands. We played with a band called Parlor Hour, who um, we actually ended up staying with that night, and they're all super nice. Um, yeah, I think in the morning we went and got coffee and like listened to Pavement Records. And then we played with Backhand from Salt Lake City, uh, who that's probably, honestly, probably my favorite band that we've played with. They're just... Every time I see those guys, they're so like energetic and so like it's just it's just fun. Like I know I know every single time I go see a backhand show, I'm like, this is gonna be a fun set, you know? Yeah. Band. Yeah, Utah's toughest team and and the greatest band of all time. Yeah. What's your most memorable fan encounter? I got recognized at the movies one time. Ooh. Yeah, I was on a date. Too. That was a, that was even the weirder part. Yeah, I walked up to the concession stand and the kid was like, "Are you Evan?" I'm like, "Yeah," and he goes, "I love your music so much." And he started like shaking so aggressively, like his <laughs> his his coworkers had to like push him aside, be like, "Dude, you need to calm down." <laughs> he was overcome by this. He was overcome with joy that he just saw this dude from this band that he liked. Yeah. Oh. I had a doctor at an urgent care clinic recognize me. That was very strange. I went into Wait, it was, what was, it was it on was, tour? No, it was after tour. Oh, it was okay. we got back from tour. I was having some ear issues on tour. Uh, I thought it was a perforated eardrum. Then it was some fluid. And then it, it was a whole fiasco. Poor deal. Bad, bad, uh, bad time. But when I went to go get the fluid checked out in my ear, they recognized me, and I was like trying to get advice on what to do with my ear, and they kept asking questions about music, and I was like, I just need medicine, please, <laughs> like please, um, and. And they worked for Radio Boise. That's why oh, they recognized us. Sense. They were a DJ with Radio Boise, and they were they were very nice. They were really cool, but it was a very awkward situation. I was trying to get medical advice, and they kept. We talked about music for like twenty minutes, so that yeah. was fun. It's always strange having fan encounters because you know people that you don't know walk up to you and they like put you on a pedestal because they're like, oh my god, you're this person. You do this thing, and I'm yeah. like, in my head, I'm just like, nah. I'm like, I, I do that, but I'm not like. You know, I mean, that that doesn't mean to say, like, don't support our music. Like, thank you for supporting. But it's it's always just super strange to me but in a cool way, not not in a bad way at all. The only one I can think of is my grandpa, but it's because he always calls us egocentrics. <laughs> and so he's not really a real fan. So, so. Like I hope he's not listening right now. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> I don't think he is. <laughs> oh yeah, I really don't know. I feel like most of the time it's just people like will come up to me when I'm like half drunken at a bar, and they're like, y- "I think I saw you on like a poster somewhere. You're in that band." And I'm like, "I do do that thing. Thank you." You know, it's usually how it goes. We yeah. all just some dudes for real. What would you say was? your worst encounter like playing or just with a fan oh that's a good question i had a doctor recognize me one time and he wouldn't give me medical <laughs> advice that was my worst enc- that was my best and worst encounter there um oh man like worst fan encounter i don't know that's a that's a hard question i don't know for the most part fans of ours are pretty nice no, no one walks up and is like, I don't like your music. I had, I actually, uh, that's not true. I, st- um, 
Yeah, I had one when I started the band. There was this kid in high school in my at my high school, who was in this really like, sorry to say, crappy black metal band. Like they were horrible, um, and he would just text me sometimes, just out of the blue, and just be like, "You suck," or like, <laughs> just out of the blue. And yet he was like, he texts me one night, and he's like. I, I, I'm bleeping this out. F you and F your band, the neo Nazis. And I was like, why? I was like, dude, no need to go there. Yeah, that's probably the most negative encounter I've had in terms of my band. That's pretty out of pocket. Yeah. <laughs> okay, your album release show was held at the Record Exchange. How else has the Boise music scene shown up for you and your album? <laughs> Does anyone want to answer this? I I thought it was cool we got a review so quickly even after that show. I know, yeah, 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 yeah. Even one of the guys there like filmed our entire set and potentially put it on YouTube. I got his phone number and stuff, and he was like, "I could send this to you." So that was kind of cool to see that someone like put the time in to like really make sure that he got the full thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I had um, my friend Gavin. He plays bass in a band called Ingrown. Mm-hmm. Who are rad? Shout out Ingrown, shout out Gavin. I think I saw them on Friday at the Shredder. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they he texted me the like uh, like a couple weeks ago, and he was like, "Dude, why don't Neocentrics tour?" And I'm like, "We have toured. We are going to tour again." And I was like, "It's just hard because we all work jobs and are like actual human beings. We can't just take a couple weeks out of the year to go out on the road." And yeah, he he told me he was like, I love the album. He was like, it's so good. Um, yeah, people have been reacting pretty positively to the record, like in the scene, and that's always cool to see. So, shout out Gavin. She helped me shout pick out up my Gavin. bass rig. Thank you. Shout out Gavin. Do you see yourselves sticking with your current set of band members, or maybe expanding in the future, or changing things in any way? It's kind of always changing. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, the, this band is always th- was founded on the idea that, like, you know, anyone can come in, like, if, if they're interested, you know, play for as long as they want, and then when they're ready to not play in the band anymore, swap them out. And so that's made things, like, kind of hard on me because it's like, well, you know, now I got to teach, you know, the next guy how many you know whatever songs but it's always it's always super fun you know um you know i like to think of it as like this is gonna sound kind of egotistical me but like i'm the director and these guys are my actors like they you know you know like i give them songs to play but they all they all bring their own unique spin to it you know and yeah that makes I think it cool. it's a way to keep a sound evolving rather than yeah, exactly. going stale or trying to make the same thing over and over again because mm-hmm. everyone does like what they do differently even if you play the same instrument or even like the same songs like things change from time to time and i think it's kind of a fun way to make music is like it's really down to like how you feel in that room at that moment rather than like any prerequisite yeah totally and to conclude with the interview, um, could you give us like a quick timeline of the band members, I guess? Does um, that make sense? So Wyatt Sherrod joined in late 2021 playing keyboards and synths. Yeah, shout out Wyatt Sherrod. And then Wyatt Rigdon, <laughs> Wyatt Rigdon joined in May of 2022, and then Quinn's actually been in and out of the band like ever since we started playing shows. But he's back in now, and he's he was playing bass beforehand, but now he's he's on the guitar. Yeah, playing guitar now. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what we do next. Yeah, I hope. My 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 one my one dream is to meet Cheryl Waters, <sighs> cause I I love her. <laughs> she's she's Shout wonderful. Cheryl. Shout out Cheryl. I love you, Cheryl. <laughs> I think my bucket list music dream is to meet Nardwar. Like it's either you yeah. can meet Nardwar or you get a Grammy. And I don't want the Grammy. I want no. The yeah, the Nardwar interview. Yeah. Yeah. Nardwar centrics. <laughs> 
I'm just terrified of you know what he's gonna pull up when he's when Nardwar. Yeah, that would be because he pulls up so much like dirty laundry and stuff from the past. Where it's like your dad was I'm like, I don't yeah. need you to tell me, please. Your dad was a marine. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> we have his medals right here. I'm like Nardwar. How did you get those? Please, those were in my living room a week ago. <laughs> what have you done? So I'd just be terrified of that of him pulling that kind of stuff up. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for having this interview with us. Yeah, thank you guys for having us. Thank you. Good night. Live from New York. Live from New York. It's Saturday night.